What is that noise? Welcome everyone. Adam the Woo here. Today's adventure brings me to El Paso, Texas, to cover the 1966 filming locations. Manos, the hands of fate. Which as the story goes, a manure salesman, a fertilizer entrepreneur, no pun intended, placed a bet at a local bar that he could make a film, a movie, and it worked. Highly regarded by many as the worst movie ever made. There are quite a few worst movies ever made, but this is definitely in the top five or ten. But there is something about it I really enjoy. There, there are some redeemable qualities, and it is certainly entertaining. I've been wanting to cover these spots for a, a pretty good while, and I'm finally going to do it. I'm inviting you to join me as I have researched the spots, and I'm going to find them. Join me. Shall you? As the recording of this, it is Wednesday, November 17th, 2021. A very beautiful day. I'm going to start off by going up Scenic Drive Park and get a view over El Paso and then down across the Mexico border as well where the opening sequence took place. Also, that salesman who placed the bet that he could make the movie probably had no idea that it was going to live on this long in infamy and be studied in great detail by many a folk, including me. I think he got his point across and he won the bet. He was also the director. He not only was he the director, but he was the main star. Gotta say, it's a pretty good view from up here. Very beautiful and expansive. You don't really see this direction so much in that scene. The family pulls up here. They are lost. And they're talking amongst themselves. Um, where exactly they should be heading and going. They ended up turning around the brink of some rocks up here. Just to the side of me, but yeah, this is this is a quite a view. Right here at the scenic scenic overlook. Here's a look at one of the screen grabs of their vehicle pulling past those rocks and then father stuck his arm out to let the car behind him know which way he was going and that would have been right around those. that's those are the very rocks right over there it turned into this spot where I'm standing right there as he pulled in it would have been right about here give or take the interesting thing is didn't really pull in at a normal straight forward position. It was more at an angle, kind of like that, as shown here, and the little concrete lift there that the viewfinders are on, and the little traffic stopping stanchions still here as well. Granted, these might be newer ones. I don't know if those are from '66 or not, but these are some classic-looking viewfinders. Certainly noticeable is that information. A little placard off to the side. That's the one with the good view there of the cityscape. This is kind of nice. It's a you are here moment. Scenic point and this gives an overview of everything that you can see from this section. Now there is a, a moment when the camera kind of pans like this and you can see this little walkout, which I didn't realize was as, as lengthy as it really is. But you can see the kind of walkout on the sidewalk in that moment as well. One of the many interesting things is the fact that they didn't really use any real audio. Had a pretty good soundtrack too when the car pulls in here. But all of the actors and actresses were voiced over at a later time, including the little girl, the daughter. So as they were parked here, well, kind of more about in this area. I'm getting cold, mother, and hungry. It was an adult woman doing the voice. It was weird. 
and the mom, you know, they don't have any snacks, they don't give her any food. In fact, they don't really get any food anywhere in the near future, anywhere in the time frame. That's just her daughter said she was hungry and cold, and the father said I could put the top up, but the mother said, no, she could just sit up here with us. Wouldn't it be the same temperature in any part of the car, whether it's the back seat, why don't they just put the top up for her? I've watched it many times, even with the commentary, and one of the commentators was Tom Naiman, who played the master, and he was saying from this, when he, when he was watching it back, kind of giving his thoughts on it, he was saying that his house was down there, you know, somewhere down there. So this whole area, he was a local to this, to this area. His daughter was in it, he was in it, and a cast of local players from the, the theater all were, were kind of hired to, to do the roles. Kind of does work out in reality as well when they pull in from that angle and then park right over here. But when they exit out, it's that angle. The car pulls around those set of rocks there. And you can see that second lip up there of the rocks around the corner. That still looks the same. Also, I don't even know 100% if it's pronounced Manos or Manos. Manos or Manos? And Manos or Manos is translated hands. So the movie really could be called Hands, the Hands of Fate. It's said by a lot of people. I didn't just, I didn't think of that all by myself. That's, that's kind of one of the main statements about the name of the movie. Filmed here in El Paso. There's also one other moment that is intercut with this overlook scene. I'm gonna try to find it. I think it's around the corner over that way but they make you think it was up here on this overlook, which it's not. Okay, the other angle is about a quarter of a mile on the descent down from Scenic Drive. Just about like that. You see the little rock hill that's there in the skyline off in the distance in the mountain range, which would have been this here. So there's the little rock part, the little rock hill, and the walkway across that rock hill as well. That's it. And it's intercut with up there on the scenic overlook. Just realized I gotta go about 19 miles back east on the outskirts of town to the next spot. I messed that up, but I'm gonna backtrack just a bit to get to the other two spots. And down the hill while I was in this area, went ahead and went by El Paso Street, 107 South El Paso Street to be more technical which is where the Capri Theater used to stand, right here next to this hotel, which is still there. And this is a photo, retro photo from back in the day. And you can see the hotel is there and the Capri was right beside it. Now inside there was where the movie premiere took place and all of the cast was on hand as well as a lot of prominent folks in El Paso. And they started laughing very shortly into as the movie started and it said that some of the cast well quite a bit of the cast ended up kind of sneaking out the back and leaving because they did not want to be there you know to witness to witness all that but witness the laughter here's a photo of tom over here he played the master there is his daughter who played the daughter i'm cold mother and hungry i guess this was before the movie started before some of the cast snuck out. Here is a side angle of that building as well from another photograph from back when the Capri was still standing. So this entire block has been bulldozed. El Paso and Henry Trost is the corner. And the Capri was basically more or less in front of where I'm standing right here. So it would have been right about there. And there was another storefront between the Capri and the hotel that still exists. I wish someone could go back in time and tell all those that left the movie premiere because they were too embarrassed that the movie would go on to live a very long life. A lot of the best ones like that were forgotten about for many years and then rediscovered. And you know, thanks to the internet, things kind of get legs again and reappear. And that's what happened with this one. It's not going away. It's shocking. It's beyond your imagination. And here is the flyer for the world premiere that happened right across the road. It was at 8 p.m. Light Stars and Excitement produced and photographed in and around El Paso with a local 
cast of stars. There it is, right down it says Capri, right down there. Starts tomorrow. Man, those the hands of fate. No matinee today. The doors open at 7.15 p.m., 45 minutes prior. So this move, movie officially rearing its head upon El Paso, and then eventually, decades later, the world. Made it to the outskirts of town. This road that runs parallel to the property here is designated Nuevo Hueco Tanks Road. I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but that's the designation. And right here, it has been bulldozed and torn down, but it appears to be some remnants of where the house was over towards Valley Lodge. I'm always confused if this was Valley Lodge or just in the Valley Lodge area when they first see the sign at the beginning. Nonetheless, this is the home where Torgo was, Master was, and you can see there are some remnants over here. And over towards that tree line is where the car first pulled in. There are quite a bit of debris. I don't want to step on any snakes. Could be, I don't know if there's scorpions out here or not. Definitely some ants. I'm gonna traverse over there. Whoa, there's a lot of birds up there. Didn't notice those until I got a little bit closer. Now the best I can figure, running long ways along here, is where the stairs leading into the house was, where Torgo met the car pulling in. They would have pulled in from that direction over there. I'm gonna kind of scour around this debris and see if I could find anything that kind of matches up at all. The satellite view from 2010 shows kind of the layout of where the buildings were. There were two buildings, kind of a utility shed, or a barn or something back there. And then all the interiors and the filming of the exteriors were in this one right here. And all those birds are in these trees right over there. So I'm kind of standing about where it was, more or less. I think it's kind of up on the, the little elevated hill just off to the side of where I'm standing. Where they pulled in was this direction. You know, obviously since 1966, none of this looks the same. But the mountain ranges are over there in the distance, in the far distance, that foliage is kind of obscuring them. But the car pulled in here, kind of circled around, pulled up right along here. There was a fence. They looked over at Confusion at Torgo standing where I am. And there's also some mountains over in the distance over there. It used to be all farmland right over this berm where this dirt is, was farmland at one point. And then this was a homestead that was used for the movie when I'm looking at but they went right along in this section, turned the corner, they'll have farmland, which is no longer green, was right there, and parked kind of in this general vicinity. Not a lot to match up, but I'm, I'm definitely getting some, some hands of fate vibes right now. And close distance, I didn't realize how close it was, but the pillars, hoping they're still there, are way over there. The whole pill, all the pillar scenes. And Torgo lost his hand. It was burnt. General vicinity of this angle as well. The very confused family. There's a lot of speculation also on if Torgo was human or if he was some sort of creature with the legs. You know, what are those, what are those mystic creatures that have the, the unusual legs? and the way he walked. I don't know if there's any, any truth to that speculation, but that's what some say. There's a lot of, a lot of that when it comes to this film. It's been studied you know, so, so much by those who love really badly made movies, but that would have been right here from this angle. I'd also hope that possibly, even though it was bulldozed, there'd be one of these bricks, these red bricks around. There are no more red bricks. They have really, really uprooted this place every sense of the term. Unrecognizable. And most likely in the very near future, the reason it was torn down, probably be condos or businesses or apartments through here. And those that live here will probably have no idea 
of the unusual film history that they're standing upon. And just one more example when she's kind of standing here. I was also hoping this stair, this, the two, two stairs would be here. They're not. Even the, even the base of the house is long gone. But that would have been about that angle. And then follow it around it was like the corner section where the daughter finds the Doberman Pinscher. It's pretty dang, dang cool to be standing in this spot, however. Right here, where Torgo would have been. Torgo, you know, he took care of the place while the master was away. And the master was that way, over, I don't know, a mile or so down that direction. Really hoping those pillars are still there. I'm gonna go check it out. Let's head over there. Looking again on this 2010, the satellite view, you'll notice next to the house, a few feet away, is kind of an indentation. I don't want to say it's a pool, but it's a concreted hole in the ground. There's some rubble here. There is a possibility that the house from Hands of Fate was all piled up over here with this rubble as well. As you can see, it's right next to those trees. And if there's any, oh, there's a red brick. Look at that. There's some red bricks right there. Holy cow. Okay, yeah, it's all been piled here. Those are the bricks from the walk when Torgo does his very unique walk to the theme music, to Torgo's theme music. Those are the bricks right there. Oh my gosh, can I even, I don't know if I should climb up here. I guess I could climb up there, but I'm gonna zoom in. Nice. Yeah, so it's all been cast over here into this pile. Wow. And there's the example again. There's the stairs and there's those red bricks. I've seen many, many times where they, Torgo went to get the luggage for the guests. He didn't even want them staying there. He tried to warn them, but they didn't listen. They didn't listen at all, but trotted across those, those red bricks many times. More of the foundation piled up here. I was looking to see if I could see the stairs, the two stairs that led into the front doorway. There's really no way of, of telling it. Probably buried underneath all the debris on top here. And something you do not see on camera was this, this, I don't know what this is, a concreted hole here, like a, to hold water, obviously it's not a pool, but this was right next to the home. And this is still here. Not shown, not shown in the movie at all. So they just tore, they tore it down from over there, moved everything to this section and piled it up. All right, I'm gonna state, I stand corrected I was saying the house was over there about probably 20, 20 yards farther than where I am. By looking at that satellite view again here and just kind of seeing the, the layout based on that concrete hole that I thought was a pool, the house really is adjacent to where that concrete hole in the ground starts, which means that I was incorrect. It was not precisely over there where I had stated, but in fact, more about here. They pretty much put the rubble on top of where it was. So those stairs could still be down there, but buried. Because by, you know, judging by that old satellite view, the house was right here next to, next to this. Or if not, if not in this precise spot, at least somewhere over in this section. Difficult to pinpoint exactly, but just wanted to clarify that, that I really do think it was here and not over there. You know, six of one, half dozen of another, but just stating that. Just getting one last look at the house. So if I ever return here, this will probably be gone. Or if anyone else ever shows up out here, there's a possibility this would be removed. A new development will take over. 
and this was the second kind of shed second home that was on the back side of the property that was not used either in the, in the filming i do wish there was more to match up i wish the building was still standing or at least you know the foundation very prominently or the sides of the walls but you get what you get 1966 was a heck of a long time ago i'm surprised anything is left out here at all and now going to just drive down the hill a bit about a mile or so see if the other spot still remains And while I just pulled away from that one spot, wanted to show that this was in the interiors of the house. He had quite the outfit there with the hands on them. And that was right over past that tree line down that road. And right up this dirt path should be the pillars. Ooh, oh, I can kind of see them peeking out over there. They're there. This is really exciting. The fact that these appear to be precisely how they were in 1966. What the heck? Yes, they're still here. I love it. Manos. Or is it Manos? This makes me happy. I'm already starting to see some blemishes and things that are noticeable. There's also an inscription here which you really can't see. It says, Toward the Morn and the Rising Sun. Right there. And there's a house, new housing development being built off in the distance, right over there. Yeah, it's moving in. So just to give a perspective, the house was right over there near those crossroads. And this was right up here. So could have technically walked from there to here. Now all the scenes in this area took place at night. Pretty much the whole movie took place at night. Oh, and this is a compass. Now I recognize this this little inscription here, but I didn't realize it was a compass. That is pointing pointing northbound. There he is resting comfortably on that concrete slab and two of his wives there up against the pillars. Now, one thing that's really interesting, which is kind of what I like about a lot of spots is kind of noticing a few different things. So as he's laying there, you can see over here is this kind of hole in the concrete, a blemish, a little bit of a, a nuance there that's very, very distinct. And I point that out because you can see it right over here. You see that distinct little hole. See the dog there? Kind of like looking at the actress there. And you got him laying across this slab with that kind of blemish there, which is always kind of neat to point that out. I'm just, this is awesome. Where the fire was burning was in the middle of that compass area. You could see the little two markings there, the two etchings, like V-shaped, and then the other ones that are not V-shaped. The fire was in that spot there. You could see the little V-shaped markings along the ground right there. See the, the V-shape I'm referring to. So it would have had the kind of the flame going up right there in the middle. And once all the wives wake up, they started arguing and he's kind of just sitting there listening, thinking, wow, they're really, they're kind of really having an argument here in front of me. And another thing I'm noticing is this little hole right here in this pillar. Notice that hole, that little etching there, just past where they're all kind of sitting around. And I point that out because over there, this is the angle as he's sitting, that hole is still there. Walk over here and give a little closer view. So there's that hole which was seen many, many times back in 1966 when he was kind of like, he was actually slapping her when she was against this pole. And he wasn't the only one doing the slapping. It was a whole slap fest going on. But there's that hole right there. So this pillar was used many times. A lot of slapping going on up here, these pillars. An even better perspective, another better angle of that hole over there in the side of the concrete little embankment here that they were laying across. And once again, there's that, there's that hole right there in the concrete. And just off to the side in this little sand area is where all the women had their fight. They were really kind of going at it right over here. 
as shown here. You see all the sand. It's really the only spot where they have that possibility of doing that because all the other areas are kind of down embankments and full of other, you know, a lot more hilly than this angle, which looks to be like the same, the same angle. And anytime he had the ability to outstretch his arms to present the hands on his wardrobe, he would do so. He's right there in front of that slab where him and others were laying down. I placed my Blu-ray over here on the corner. This is where his feet would have been. It was also that pole that she was up against there when he put the fire down towards her feet right over there as well. This is a very popular pillar. Here's another angle when he's walking in with his dog, the Doberman, coming up from, from that angle. That's also where Torgo, who had his hand caught on fire and torn off right down here because the, you know, the, the fire was right there at the base of that compass, Torgo ran off that way. You can't really see any background stuff because it was nightfall. It was under nightfall. Oh, here's another one when he's telling the women to, to stop. Arms stretched out with those hands on the wardrobe. Also on that same side over there <laughs> in the sand. Just very close correlation, you know, to the, to these. Even though Torgo lost his hand, was caught on fire. He did, he did get away. He did get away, even though he was laying there and then his hand was burned right there at that little like flame there by the, where the compass was. Yeah, Tor I think Torgo made it, but not before having the women, you know, going after him as he was laying right there with the camera angle kind of up like that. And they were above him, kind of clawing at him. And then eventually he rolled off right along the ground right there with that same indentation over on the end that I mentioned. As he's laying there, you can see the props they put in his legs near his knees. Again, there's that kind of hole in the side. Torga, a great character. Here he is getting his hand ripped off. He was on fire, being held up there in the air while he kind of scurries off that direction. Really happy this place still exists. And when they were filming it, they probably had no idea that there was going to be a high-definition version. You know, you watch the original kind of grainy stuff, you miss a lot of stuff, but it's been restored. Which, you know, pretty awesome. Trying to get it all kind of in the same frame there. One more spot. Well, one more spot that I discovered that I'm happy to, to reveal. Heading over there now. Because this one wasn't too difficult to find, obviously. You had to figure out exactly where it was, but there were some mentions online about where this was. Just happy it still remains. The next one, however, I've seen no indication that anyone's discovered where that was, so I'm just gonna put it out there. This one was kind of an easy one, this section. Although there was not really a super duper update. You never know, things change so quickly, year to year. Things could be removed, so I'm glad this is still here. And yes, I did contemplate recreating laying down on there, but I don't know what that mess is. I don't know if I want to put my head down there. So let's just say I did. This is awesome, for real. Oh, there used to be a sidewalk right there. Or there still is a sidewalk, it's just kind of hidden over with the dirt leading to that building back there. All right, moving on. I can get my clipboard. What a great robe. It'd be a great cosplay, would it not? At a convention? See some Manos cosplay or Torgo, perhaps? I'd give anyone a high five that, that did that. That's, that's a deep cut. This whole movie's a deep cut, but what I like about it. Moving on. Oh, so random that this exists. And random that it's still there. Okay, walking back to the car. I don't know, probably 30 miles to the next spot. It's on the complete other side. I'm on the east side. I'm going over to the west side. And then I'm done. 
one last spot. Just looked it up and it's 26 miles to the next and final spot. The El Paso Country Club. Well, just outside of it. A couple blocks outside of the El Paso Country Club. This is Memory Drive. And it's unusual because Memory Drive kind of slants off that way and goes around a rather new roundabout up there. But now that I'm here looking at it, you'll notice the old Memory Drive still exists next to this property of this rock fence wall. So Memory Drive, there's just like an unusual makeshift parking lot here from where the old Memory Drive was before the roundabout was built. And they've kind of coincided it into the driveway leading into this property. So I think Memory Drive used to go through where this rock wall now sits based on, I'm showing, I'm showing all this and explaining it. So when I get up to the roundabout, it'll make a little more sense. There's never been a definitive answer to where Manos the Hands of Fate title screen went across and where the the car was driving from and then turned down towards the makeshift sign that was painted that says Valley Lodge. Where is this street corner? The only clue would have been right over here. You can kind of see obscured by foliage a street sign but it's you cannot tell what that says. I am 100%, well, 99.9% .9 confident that the spot I am standing at is where this was. Renovated and changed so much since 1966. All of these homes were not built until 1977. This was all farmland all through here that could be seen when the officer pulls over the car to talk to them, except they were pulled over on the far end of that roundabout over in that direction. I'll walk over a little bit closer, but yeah, all this was farmland back in 66. Everything I'm pointing the camera at over there. Now following along the former route of Memory Drive, there is this fire hydrant. Could be a new fire hydrant. They may have rerouted it a few feet, but I am under the assumption that that fire hydrant is this fire hydrant right here, repainted. Now it could have been moved, but I do believe it's in the same spot based on the other road that's behind me I'm about to show you. So I'm thinking where the car turned down would have been right here. This brick wall was not here. Memory Drive would have come out right about here. And that sign, that Valley Lodge sign would have been right about there. Now I could be off a few feet and they might have put a different fire extinguisher a few feet over, but there is a good possibility that that fire extinguisher is the same one. A good possibility, or at least you know, the, same, the same water system underneath it. Because if you look from this angle, you will notice fire, ex fire hydrant there, not extinguisher, fire hydrant there, but up here, and you couldn't see this in the, the old school grainy version, but in the crystal clear Blu-ray version, you can faintly make out El Paso Country Club. And look at the distance between the roads. You got that road there, and then you got the other El Paso Country Club road, which is over on the distance. So, you got the fire hydrant here, and El Paso, El Paso Country Club Road is right up there. Same distance, look at that. And at the very end of the movie, when the two ladies are driving down this road, the camera's facing the other direction, and you can see over the top of their car, there is one very unique looking building off on the horizon there. And that building is still back there, even though there's kind of a rock wall in front of it, that building is still there, which would be the perspective facing that way. Now I'm gonna zoom in and show that building. This is a very busy, this road was not that busy back in 1966. Been repainted, but that is the very building 
very unique architecture, so very, very distinct. That's the building behind them as they're driving down the road towards what you would think would be towards Valley Lodge. Oh, I wasn't even standing in the road. That person hawked. I'm on the sidewalk. Startled. Now looking at this again, over at the El Paso Country Club signage here, it goes over like a little bit of a, I don't know what you'd call it, a ravine of sorts, a ditch, and it has the little railing there because there is a bridge. You would assume there is a bridge and there is a little bit of a ditch here. Now where that sign was, was right over here. Let me walk by and show where that El Paso Country Club signage was. It was here. So there would have been a metal railing right along here. This is very long-winded to explain this, but it's been a source of a lot of conversations when I'm looking things up online. This is one of the elusive spots. So this is my thoughts on it. I'm pretty confident. Metal railing was right there. And that El Paso Country Club sign was right there. And then they would have turned and gone down that road. Which puts where they got pulled over right here along the ditch would have been right in this area. And as I stated, the houses were not built till 77. So all the houses would not have been there. And there was a guy on a tractor doing a little bit of work. And that tractor and the fields could be seen as they were pulled over in this very spot right there. So that spot is that spot. Now keep in mind the street side, Memory Club Drive and Country Club Drive would have been about 30 yards farther that way where everyone's turning by the fire hydrant. I almost said extinguisher again. But that's where they would have turned. It would have gone down, well not this new memory drive, but the one farther over there, right along the edge of that rock wall. And one more, one more point to prove this. At the end, the two ladies are driving, they turn past the stop sign, down onto memory. And when they do that, you'll notice there's like a little indicator sign, a little warning sign that you can't go any farther because you go into that ditch, the ditch that's over there. Boy, this is such a busy road. No one's going down memory though. They're all going down Country Club. I'm gonna walk across. But where the street sign, which is now there on the new memory drive, would have been up here there is a glimmer, an indication for one millisecond of what road this is. And that is another hint on how I figured this out. Right before they made this turn, and right during this moment, above the stop sign, if it is paused for just a brief moment, depending on what version you have, you have to look at the older version, because on the Blu-ray, they kind of cropped it out a little bit. If you look at the old, grainy, version. Look up top here and look at the lettering of what it says. Gosh, can you even see it? It's very dark. Hold on. Let me go over here. There it is. Look at that. See if you can make out what letters those say. C, O, U, and part of an N. Right there. You have to have a keen eye. Country Club Driver Road. One of the two. The wind is like not wanting this to cooperate with this. But that's it. Holy cow. Going on record and saying that this is the corner. And that Valley Lodge sign was right over here. Next to the fire hydrant. And the road would have gone between the fire hydrant, right there, and they would have pulled down towards the Valley Lodge sign, which was right there. And that's gonna do it for today. Ugh. Wanted to cover this for a while. I did. I feel good about it. I love doing obscure filming locations. Did quite a few the last series of days on this road trip going cross country. Good times. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over.